the sorts of things that police forces are dealing with now are so much more national and international and therefore it's really important that all the forces in England and Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and lots of other forces work together to tackle these threats. The National Police Chiefs Council has the key role in coordinating the efforts of police forces, uh, making sure we're doing more collaboration and working together cooperatively. For the first time this year we're going to have a delivery plan um, Chief Constables met today in Oxford and we discussed the plan and we've agreed what our priorities are for the coming year. Lots of work around um, serious organised crime, terrorism, but also important issues about how we deal with our people and how we spend our money. Okay, so we've got two big challenges over the next year in CT policing. So, um, first of all, with the threat being um, so significant, with the threat being as severe, the attack is highly likely and it's going to be there for a sustained period. We're having to work um, flat out in terms of countering the threat, making more arrests than ever before, a greater degree of coordination across the country. Um, we have to work harder on prevent, working with families and communities because of the way the ter terrorists are reaching into that direction, and changing our stance on protect and prepare in the way we um, visibly protect people and move that around based on the nature of the threat. So operationally it's going to be a very stretching year. Uh, secondly, Given the nature of the threat is changing and there's a new government and a spending review, we've got to be really clear how we need to organise ourselves and spend money to best effect over the next five years to position ourselves best to counter terrorism. So we've got big challenges, for example, around improving our digital capabilities to deal with the online threat or working out with the prison service how to deal with the increasing number of extremists that we're putting inside prison. The country is facing a significant terrorist threat. And to deal with this, the government has introduced new legislation to extend the prevent duty uh, to all public institutions. So the priority for us um, is to work with other agencies as to how we can identify people who may be at risk of being drawn into uh, extremist propaganda and extremist activity. Um, and also to try and make sure that there is an open conversation about some of these difficult issues so that we're able to, uh, to develop a counter-narrative against some of the extremist ideologies and make sure that we're building on some of the really good existing relationships on how we safeguard vulnerable people. Hello, my name is Stephen Kavanagh and I'm the Chief Constable of Essex Police. Crime has changed enormously as we've changed our lives in the way that we live in a digital age, the way that we communicate, the way that we trade, the way that we produce goods offers us enormous opportunities as communities, but it also offers enormous opportunities for those who wish to cause harm child sexual exploitation, child abuse imagery, handling stolen goods, sale of drugs, and so many other things. The challenge is immense. How do we become more effectively, consistently at the very front line? This is no longer a specialism. Digital investigations and intelligence affects every single one of us. And we need to recognize the victim of those crimes are just as much victims as those of burglaries and motor vehicle crimes. The NPCC has pulled together uh, a capabilities management group that they've asked me to chair in which we are trying to identify what skills you need to combat these crimes and to meet victims needs more effectively. The NPCC with the support of the college and the home office is making sure that you are given the right tools to do the jobs and to fight crime not just for today and yesterday's crimes but tomorrow's crimes too. One of the greatest challenges the police service is going to face in the 21st century has to be child sexual abuse. And when you look at the increase in the volume that we're now having to deal with, it is quite staggering. We're now predicting an 88% increase this year, and potentially up to 70,000 investigations, which is a huge increase on those figures of 2012. The problem with that is, is the fact is that by the time somebody reports being a victim, the damage is done and it's too late. So the d debate and the dialogue that we now have to have is with our partners to say, how do we prevent people becoming abused in the first place? That's why it's so important that we get into schools, we get into colleges, and we start educating and protecting some of the most vulnerable members of society at the earliest possible stage. Thereafter, we have to ensure once somebody has been a victim that the service is responsive. And it's every police officer and police staff member's responsibility to protect the vulnerable. The challenge that the MPCC faces now around demand is essentially to better understand the demand that the police service faces. That's why we've been working with the College of Policing who produced a really good report in January this year. But actually there's more to do. So the MPCC 
will kick off a piece of work that will be complementary to the college's work and I think it will probably look at four areas. It will look at predicting demand, it will look at the productivity of our staff, it will look at the resourcing and supply side and also communication and that's about the authentic conversation with stakeholders and with members of the public. It's a real privilege to be the chair of the National Police Chiefs Council Workforce Coordinating Committee. It's a really focused group dealing with many of the most important issues for our workforce today. Diversity is still incredibly relevant for us, but not only that is the well-being and safety of our staff. As we sometimes ask them to work ever harder, we need to make sure that we're looking after them as best as we can. Also within there is the future workforce structures that everybody will be interested in, and critical as well is the response to the College of Policing Leadership Review to see how we want to do leadership across policing into the future. Over the last four years we've reduced the cost of policing by about two and a half billion pounds. That means there's about 36,000 less officers and staff than there used to be. We listened to the Chancellor's budget last week and it's clear that we're going to have more cuts in our budgets over the next three or four years. Uh, probably the same sort of level as the last three or four years. There's a significant challenge. We are determined that we're going to protect uh, and safeguard the public. Uh, but in order to do so, I think we're going to have to police in different ways. Chief Constables have spent a lot of time over the last day or so thinking about how we can protect the public with much smaller budgets.